What's up, everybody? I'm John Hoover. Welcome to my YouTube channel. You all know I love me some college football. For me, I mean, really, seriously, it pays the bills, puts food on the table, and basically <laughs> keeps me from going crazy. But i uh, got a couple bits of rotten news today about college football. I'm going to tell you what that is coming right up. Need to do this first. This channel is going away, so please take a second, click on the card right there, and subscribe to my other channel. Everything that's going up here is going up there. And when this stuff is all gone, when this channel's gone, that's going to be the only channel that I'm posting to. So subscribe right now. Go ahead. I'll wait. Okay, real quick, follow me on Twitter at John E. Hoover or on Facebook at John E. Hoover Media. So my day job, and you know, actually my night job too, uh, I'm the publisher of the new Sports Illustrated affiliate, SI Sooners, allsooners.com. And we covered the Oklahoma Sooners a bunch there. You guys know this. You've seen the uh, you've seen the headlines. You've seen the website. Well, unfortunately, we got some rotten news today. Times two, within about a five minute span, the Big Twelve Conference announced it was canceling this year's media day, and then the Southeastern Conference announced it would not be playing any non-conference games in 2020. I mean, geez. Now, obviously, the Big Twelve got word of the SEC's decision, so Commissioner Bob Bowlesby immediately put out a you know quick three-paragraph press release that said, basically, part of Media Day is asking questions about who you're playing and when, and frankly, he didn't see the need for it this year. Yeah, okay, more on that later. But first, the SEC announcement came down really just a few minutes later after the Big 12 deal. And what it means specifically for Oklahoma is, is painful, and it's obvious the Tennessee volunteer, Volunteers will not be coming to Norman, Oklahoma on September 12th, after all. That um, really cool interconference matchup that we've all been waiting for since that last classic back in 2015. You guys remember the Baker Mayfield-Sterling Shepard game back in 2015 in Knoxville. I was there. I was on the sideline for that. Shep caught his touchdown pass to tie it right in front of me, like landed at my feet. That's how close I was to this thing. I've been to Neyland Stadium a couple of times for a couple of classics. The other one was the Arkansas game in 1997. Remember the fumble at the end by the quarterback, Clint Sterner. I couldn't wait for this series to get going again. This is uh, one of the most fun college football series that I've gotten to cover over the years, and I've been doing this a long time, but won't be played this year, and that sucks. I think we all knew this was a real possibility, but here's the deal. There's a few of us uh, media types, I guess, who were, you know, kind of holding out hope that the SEC and the Big 12 would try to forge ahead and play a 12-game schedule with, of course, all the necessary safety measures and coronavirus pre precautions in place, of course. But uh, the virus just continues to win, continues to kick all our butts. And this news today is just a, a sucker punch in the gut, isn't it? I mean, now we're going to have to hope that the Sooners and Vols are going to be able to face off at Owen Field at some future date. As far as I know, the 2021 game in Knoxville is still on. But overall, think about this now. For the Big 12, that's nine non-conference matchups against Power 5 opponents that are officially scratched in 2020 so far. That's OU Tennessee, LSU Texas, Baylor Ole Miss, Kansas State Vanderbilt, Oklahoma State Oregon State, TCU Cal, Texas Tech, Arizona, Iowa State, Iowa, and West Virginia, Maryland. We're still waiting on, I guess, official word. I don't think it's come down since uh, I started this video. We're still waiting on official word from either the ACC or the Big 12 in regards to Kansas Boston College and West Virginia Florida State. Those are the two left that the Big 12 can cling to if the ACC will play the Big 12 in its non-conference games. We don't know that yet. Announcement could be coming. Another thing we don't know yet, at this point anyway, is if the Big 12 is going to call on some group of five schools to try to fill those slots, or if the Big 12 is just going to do what the other Power 5 leagues have done, which is go to a conference-only schedule. I say all the other Power 5 leagues. As I mentioned earlier, the ACC announced it would be keeping or adding one non-conference game to the schedule this year. So 
I guess we'll wait for something more concrete from either the Big 12 or the ACC, possibly next week. Um, that could get interesting. The NCAA Board of Governors is meeting next week, next Tuesday. And I think that will allow us to know something a little more concrete after that. And then the Big 12, you know, could follow up with an announcement literally at any minute that they've got a plan in place. It was reported just yesterday that the Big 12 had three working models going. A 12-game schedule, a 9-game schedule, and a 9 plus 1 schedule. So I guess we'll see. You know, no Big 12 media day on Monday. You know, I guess at this point, I, I could probably live with it. Um, if we're not going to be at Jerry World, asking the questions of the players and the coaches face to face then a video a video call with the with the coaches no players but just coaches was going to seem kind of useless anyway and the the Big 12's plan was to have the Q&A part of it the the media with the head coach it was going to be just a dial in situation where there's a I don't know, a coach on the video screen and a bunch of disembodied voices on the phone asking that coach a question and then the coach looking into the camera and trying to answer it. It was going to be awkward. It was going to be weird. It was probably not going to be great quality. Those are never very good anyway. So canceling this year's event, listen, Big 12 Media Days is one of the biggest, coolest. For me, it is. I love the thing. There's some cynics out there that don't like it, but I love Big 12 Media Days because number one, you get a chance to get back with your colleagues you get a chance to get back with your uh, your friends that you've been on the beat with throughout the year and, and uh, meet members of the media from other schools. And you also get to get some face time with these coaches. Uh, some of the coaches, they get to know you and your face, your questions, your voice for the co for the weekly conference call every you know Monday throughout the season. So they know who they're talking to. And maybe there's a little bit more element of trust if they see you face to face, if you're asking them questions. I just, and same with the players, if the players know who you are and the players are responding to your questions, if the players can, can look you in the eye when they're doing it, there's a, there's a greater degree of trust. And I just think it's a lot of hard work for a two day period. And the, the period that comes up behind it, the, the next couple of weeks, you're always planning additional content interviews with such and such. I remember I got a one-on-one -on -one with Will Greer when he started the, the campaign, the season a couple of years ago as one of the Heisman favorites, one of the Heisman front runners, a uh, preseason anyway, uh, it didn't work out for him, but he stopped and, and gave me a good 10 minute interview, just me and, and Will Greer. I mean, that's what big 12 media days is about. I got a great one-on-one -on -one last year with Matt rule, the Bay, the, the, Bay, the Baylor coach, the former Baylor coach, and, you know, he was getting some food and I was getting some food and we just stepped to, stepped out of line and I did a quick interview. This is what Big 12 Media Days is all about. And it's just a real opportunity lost um, for not just media, but for coaches and people who work for the universities to allow, to allow themselves to get to know the media a little bit. This thing being canceled, though, the in-personal conference call type setting is not a bad deal. You know who I really feel bad for? And I'm being totally serious when I say this. My deputy editor at SI Sooners, Parker Thune, I sent him a text today and said, man, I'm sorry this is all happening. This was going to be his first Big 12 media day, his first uh, OU Tennessee game for sure. And him being a senior at OU, uh, I, I just feel bad that he's not going to get to take part in some of the events, some of the stuff that makes this job so much fun. Anyways, like he said, we'll roll with the punches. We'll do the best we can covering whatever news or games we have to cover. Anyway, as of Thursday, July 30th, Oklahoma State, here's where Oklahoma stands with its schedule. The season opener against Missouri State has been moved to August 29th. That is now officially 30 days from today, folks. Think about that. Now, who knows if we'll actually have this thing. The Big 12 might come out and say no non-cons or no non-con road games, you know, thinking about the Army game, or just one non-con. Uh, but the Big 12 might go rogue. Two, we don't know. And they might come out and say, hey, we got 12 games on the schedule. We're going to be the one league, the one Power 5 league that works to find a way to play those 12 games. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? As for the Sooners game at Army on September 26th, that one hasn't been canceled yet either. Yet. And, and stay with me here. It might not be. I'm just saying. I've spoken with some administrators at Army. I've been told by two different people that truthfully, being a military academy and thus falling under the umbrella of the Department of Defense and the United States government, well, they have slightly different rules in place at West Point than they would at, um, say, if they were playing at Rutgers or something like that. In other words, if there's a closure 
in the state of New York or a mandatory quarantine like there is right now for travelers from Oklahoma into New York, that doesn't necessarily apply to those coming to West Point. There could be restrictions. Yeah, I know there could be, and there probably will be. And I'm sure it all gets very complicated how these are going to be laid out. But bottom line, we've still got two months to figure it out. So you know me, ever the optimist, I'll put it this way. People I spoke with seemed just, just a couple days ago, seemed very enthusiastic about having me on the West Point campus come late September. They said they were looking forward to meeting me and, and some other members of the media as well. So again, we'll see. A couple quick notes over at SI Sooners, allsooners.com. Man, we've got a ton of recruiting news, especially on the 2021 class. SI All-American has announced its national top 10s at five different positions so far. And at two of those positions, there's an Oklahoma commit ranked number one. And at two others, there are two other guys that the Sooners are among the finalists for, also ranked number one. So think about that. Oh, you could have four players who are ranked number one at their position if things work out in the uh, 2021 recruiting class. You all know who the names are. It's, uh, it's Caleb Williams. It's Mario Williams, no relation. It's Emeka Agbuka, the wide receiver. That list came out today. And, of course, it's Bryce Foster, the mountain, the offensive lineman. We also have news of a possible verbal commit coming on Saturday, so you're going to want to keep your eyes open for that. SI Sooners, allsooners.com. Oh, you made the top three for a four-star defensive end. We've got a story on that, of course. And one of Caleb Williams' top targets in this class, he has set his announcement date. He has told everybody when he's going to make his announcement, where he's going to school. Check out SI Sooners for more on that. Allsooners.com. And you know what? Let's finish this thing today with a little bit of really good news. OU announced its latest round of COVID-19 testing results today. And for the fourth week in a row, the university reported zero positive tests. Zero. <laughs> How great is that? A total of 186 tests were administered on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. That's 100 football players, 14 men's basketball players, 11 women's basketball players, and 61 staff members from those three sports. And for the fourth straight week, no new positives. Uh, whatever's going on in Norman, Oklahoma is definitely doing something right. Please remember to subscribe to my other YouTube channel. If you're able to do that today, thank you so much. And don't forget, at SISooners, allsooners.com, all our content is free. We have a community just like a message board. So jump in there and let us know what you think. Again, it's free, it's easy, and it is fun. SISooners, allsooners.com. Don't forget, follow me on Twitter at John E. Hoover or on Facebook at John E. Hoover Media. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. See you guys.